The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning, racing fans, and welcome here to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing this past weekend at Santa Anita, the 36th edition of the Breeders' Cup. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll have all of the highlights, and we'll start with the Dirt Mile. <laughs> Local trainer Carlos Guerrero sent Spun to run his dynamic three-year-old, and he was attempting to upset Omaha Beach. Could Parks come with back with two Breeders' Cup wins in the last two years? We'll have that here in our opening segment. Of course, the classic $6 million, the top handicap horses. Could Chad Brown get it done? Could the Euros dominate on the turf? All of those questions, again, over the next 30 minutes here on Let's Go Racing. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones down on the beautiful first floor here at Parks Racing. And the guy that has probably forgotten more horse racing than I've ever learned, <laughs> my friend Dick Girardi. Dick, you were out at Santa Anita. What was the flavor? Yeah, it was great, Yeah, Keith. It's always a great setting. It's To me, it's the greatest setting in American sports with the San Gabriel Mountains in the background beyond the backstretch, Pasadena and Rose Bowl right. on the other side, downtown L.A., about 20 miles away. And it's just a beautiful place to hold a big event like that. And... Uh, I mean, this it, it was it was phenomenal. They had record handles on Friday and Saturday. I mean, there were people everywhere, people around the country betting on it. It's the best of the best, and it's our final exam and yeah. everybody's final chance for championships. It was just uh, it was just awesome as it always is. Well, Dick, let's get to the dirt mile because yep. you mentioned spun to run. The dirt mile, of course, had one mile event. Purse here was one million dollars. Omaha Beach was the favorite. Got bet down to even money for Dick Mandela. Dick had a terrific spring. He won yep. the Rebel. He won the Arkansas. Derby, yep. then had to take some time off. Now, Dickie came back with a big performance. He did. Now, off a big layoff and a big performance, mm -hmm. you're going to bounce maybe? Yeah, he's even money. I thought he was going to be overhyped and overbet. Both of those things happen. Certainly, he's capable of winning. Right. I mean, he's a really talented horse. It was a horrible price. And there were some other really, really talented horses in there. Dick, they continued to bet improbable. He's yes. the second choice. He's 9-2. to two. And Dick, with all of his talent this yep. season, he is 1 for 6. Yeah, I tossed him. He was an immediate toss yep. for me. I saw enough, Leary. He's yep. his gate problems. And he's never been quite as good as everybody thought, as yep. you just pointed out with your uh, stat there. One win all year. And Dick, now we get to Spun to run. Yes. We mentioned last week that he did get some interest in the morning line at 6-1. to one. Mm -hmm. Dick, that drifted up to 9-1 to one at yep. Time. You got Irad Ortiz Jr., who is coming off that huge performance here at Parks in the Belezzi Appreciation Mile. Yeah, 110, uh, biggest buyer speed figure all year by three all going around two turns. People just didn't accept it. They, oh, he couldn't do that, he, and he can't do it again. Right. Well, Carlos told Irad, don't fool around, because he didn't like some of the rides this horse had gotten recently. Right. He said, just go. Well, watch. Yeah, here's the dirt mile and the call for a million dollars. Spun to run is nine to one. Spun to run, who's sent out to the early lead. Blue Chipper's got speed to the outside. It's these two, one, two, making their way into the turn, and Cole Front settles in behind them. Then Improbable on the inside, who slips through an opening and now is three and a half lengths off the lead. Mr. Money is three wide, and Snapper Sinclair, Omaha Beach, is racing about seven lengths behind as they make their way toward the backstretch. Diamond Oops is next, then Ambassadorial in Giant Expectations is the trailer. 23.05 was the opening quarter mile. Spun to run onto the back stretch in front. Korea's blue chipper is second, and he's a length and three quarters behind. Mr. Money and Improbable heads apart, just ahead of Cole Front running along in fifth. Then a break of another two to Snapper Sinclair. Omaha Beach coming from well behind today. He's about nine lengths off the lead. And now Mike Smith is starting to hand ride him a bit, trying to get him to go as they make their way into the turn. The half was 46.51. The giant expectations, time at Oops and Ambassadorial. Spun to run, leads them along. He's been on top every step of the way with Blue Chipper chasing him around that far turn. It's another three lengths back to Mr. Money. Omaha Beach is going to make his move on the far outside. He's floated very wide. He went four deep on the turn, but he's starting to pick it up. And they're into the stretch with Spun to Run and Cat. The one to catch coming to the eighth pole. Spun to Run drifting out with the lead. Blue Chipper on the inside is second. Omaha Beach has made his way up into third, but Spun to Run has run away. Herod Ortiz and Spun to Run, the real deal of the dirt mile. They won it by three and a half lengths. 
Well, Dick, spun to run, absolutely dominates the yep. turf mile, gets out and leads every step of the way, comes home almost three lengths in front under Irad Ortiz Jr. Your $2 bet gets you $20.20 to win. Omaha Beach, who was pretty far off the pace, mm -hmm. rallies for second, number eight, Blue Chipper finishes third. Dick Carlos Guerrero spun to run, Bob Donaldson, just the win of a lifetime. Yeah, look, when Carlos won the Smarty Jones here on Labor, that was his first graded stakes win. It was very, very emotional. Well, this was scads more emotional. You can imagine what the winter circle scene was like. And uh, Marshall Graham from 10 Strike is one of Carlos's owners here. He came down. He was very emotional. He was crying. Because, I mean, look, it's hard. These races are hard oh, to yeah. win. I mean, really hard to win. And here's the horse that's off three weeks, off three weeks, off three weeks. And he keeps coming back. And, yeah, he couldn't do a 110 this time, Keith. He only got a 109. Oh, bummer. He did it yeah. again. And I, I thought the Korean horse was amazing, blue chipper. Mm -hmm. They said he was the best horse in the history of Korea. None of us knew what that meant. Well, that meant he's a really good horse because he chased, spun to run around. But nobody was getting to him. I, I don't care how far. And if you watch the gallop out, he was pulling back away. I mean, he was a wild horse. I read Ortiz said I was just a passenger. Yeah. And Carlos and I thought the most poignant line was, this gets, brings me to a whole new level as a trainer. And it really does. He's won a grade one. He's won a Breeders' Cup race. We around here knew how good he was. And now this horse, no telling what he could do. I don't know I don't know if they're going to run him anymore this year or not to be determined. But as a four-year-old, just think how good, he, how good he's gotten in the last couple of months. Yep. And the difference, Carlos said, was once he put the blinkers on, everything changed. Dick Bob Donaldson, a great guy. In Absolutely. high school, he used to hop the fence yep. with his wife, to, later wife to be yep. Yep. after sports get in there for the last two Garden races State. to bet the double at Garden State yeah. Park and now he wins the Breeders' yeah, Cup. Good for Bob. And yeah. Bob is the guy who told Carlos, hey, go bid on this horse. And Carlos yeah. doesn't normally do that. They bought him at the Timonium yeah, Sales a couple of years here. ago. And look, we all love Hart's Spawn around here. The yeah. Pennsylvania yeah. Brady's a really good sire. You can say really, really good son of Hart's Spawn. And I do not think this horse has finished winning. Yeah. This was some performance. Well, Dick, here's more in the post-race with Carlos Guerrero and the connections of Spawn to run. I came out aggressive. I think too aggressive, to be honest. I go into the first turn trying to slow it down, and he don't want to come back to me. I say, oh, man, I probably send it too much. Now I'm trying to slow it down. He, he, I know I, I don't know how the time was, but I feel like I'm going a little fast. And I keep fighting with him, but he don't want to come back to me. I just let him be there. I can hold it no more, so I just try to relax him and let him be. That was his, his pace. And then he just keep going. I know that Carlos can read a horse and really can get inside their head. And his, his, his team is really such an added plus. You know, Jose, Jose is exercise rider. Eli is groom. Those guys really, and with Carlos, brought us here. You are a lifelong racing fan. Uh, just talk about starting off going to the race as a teenager and now owning a horse in the Breeders' Cup and winning the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Yeah, it's a, it's a dream come true. I mean, my wife and I used to jump the fence at Garden State when we were 14 after sports. <laughs> we, still had, we still had a chance to catch the eighth and the ninth. I wasn't thinking about running Breeders' Cup, I'll be honest. Um, you know, I was like, you know, I was telling people, we might give him a little break. He's been running hard, blah, blah, blah. But then my groom is going, he's kicking the walls, he's jumping. And then I access my assistant is like, man, he's bouncing in the shirt row. And then I'm like, okay. And then I see the, my owner and he says, uh, he says, what is this? I heard you want to give him a little time off. I said, well, you know, he's been running hard. And he says, well, I know you're the trainer, but give me a favor. Just tell me what you see every morning, training wise. And I said, okay. So when we start training and I start seeing him, he's like, like boss, he's training better than ever. Boss, he's doing this. Boss, he's doing that. And a week later, he says, we're going to the brisk. Well, we can't congratulate those guys enough. And Dick, for the little guy, Parks, yes. how about two Breeders' Cup wins in two years? Yeah, Jaywalk last year uh, for John's service and, and the Cassius King guys in the greens. And she dominated in similar yes. fashion yep. to Spun to Run. She's in the Parks Hall of Fame. I think we can reserve yeah. a spot here for Spun to Run, too. And he'll be our Parks Horse of yeah. the Year here. Yeah. Obviously, because uh, <laughs> he's run here enough times that he qualifies. You could put him up as a unanimous is, choice. Is there anything more than unanimous? Because yeah. he will be. He Dick, will be a lot. Dick, let's get to our first wake. We'll go back here on Let's Go Racing. It's the classic. It's the turf. We've got lots more great stuff. Stay with us back after this. They make their way into the clubhouse turn with the Preakness winner in front. War of Will has opened up a two and a half length early lead. Race horses are pampered. Treated with care and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. 
We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hard-working folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Time for more Breeders' Cup coverage brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you probably paid too much. We wrap it up at the end of the day with a classic dick. <laughs> mile and a quarter for $6 million. Let's take a look at the, uh, well, we had two Pennsylvania Derby winners in here, McKenzie yep. and Bath Wizard. Yep. McKenzie, the favorite here at 5-2. to two. Dick, two for six on the year. We right. know he's supremely talented. Yep. What's missing? More wins. Uh, I mean, before that, it's just it was just strange. He ran well in every race. Unlucky, I would say, in the Met Mile. Uh, he lost the Sanity and Handicap by a nose, so that's essentially a winning race. But, yeah, I mean, it's not like he's running badly. Right. He just isn't yeah. winning all the races. Dick Code of Honor, the second choice, uh, breaks from the 11 hole 7 to 2 for Shog McGahee. Dick, he has developed into one of the top three year olds in the country. If he wins here, he's going to probably win the Eclipse Award. Yep. Didn't work well going into the race. Yeah, he was great. His, his second to last workout was awesome. Then the last workout was on a sloppy sealed track, and they wanted to go slow, but not that slow. Mm -hmm. And so he started getting, and I know Shug was not thrilled with right. the circumstance. Uh, and of course, Vino Rosso, who they had the battle in the Jockey Club Cup, right. Cup. He's in here, too. Dick, Vino Rosso's 9 to 2. Elate is 9 to 1. Mm -hmm. Yoshida, 7 to 1. Higher right. Powers, 9 to 1. Math Wizard, the longest price at 39 to 1. No superstars this right. year like we've had in years past. No California Chrome, no Arrogate, no American Pharaoh, but a lot of really good yep. top horses. Well, here's the call of the classic. War of Will has opened up a two and a half length early lead with McKinsey and Mongolian Groom heads apart second and third and they're getting closer now and McKinsey is sent through an opening on the inside. Oh, he's not going to get through there and he had to take up as they head to the back stretch. Vino Rosso is fourth on the outside and then it's Owen Dale in fifth. The half mile was 47.16 seconds. It's a reasonable pace onto the back stretch. Then it's higher power seeking the soul. Code of Honor is alongside of Elaine, and they're 10 lengths behind right now. Then Yoshida and Math Wizard is the trailer as they head up the back stretch at Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup Classic. With War of Will the leader on top by a length and a half. And then it's McKinsey on the inside. Alongside of Mongolian Groom, and McKinsey's going to come after War of Will now. He's got his run, and McKinsey has taken the lead. McKinsey takes over. Mongolian Groom goes with him. War of Will is faded to third. Vino Rosso begins to rev it up from fourth on the outside, and he's storming toward the front runners now. Code of Honor is next, and Higher Power is closing on the outside. They're coming to the top of the stretch, and it is McKinsey off the turn in front. Vino Rosso alongside. These two at the 16th pole. Vino Rosso has taken the lead, and it's a Vintage performance by Vino Rosso! Dick Vino Rosso picks a good time to run probably the best race of his life. Having no a chance doubt. to sit just off the pace makes a big run. It ends up drawing off to win by better than four at the end. You get nine to two and eleven dollars and twenty cents to win here at number eight. McKenzie ends up finishing second again. Yep. Higher power was third. Dick Vino Rosso, when he went to the West Coast mm -hmm. and won the gold, uh, right. the uh, Gold Cup, third start back off a layoff. Yep, absolutely the same pattern here for Pletcher, and he does it in the big time here with the classic yeah, victory. Yeah, that was the trial race when he brought him out in yep. May, and his last workout. Remember, remember Noble Indy he was a pretty mm -hmm. good horse for Todd last year. He, they worked him together. Noble Indy had like a four-length head start. Vino Rosso blew him away. It, you could see the horse was getting as good as he possibly could be. The question was going to be, is that good enough? I ran into Todd Wednesday morning when I was cruising around the barn. Zoe Cadman from XPTV was there and said, what's your best chance this weekend? He said Vino Rosso, and he knew. It. And I'm happy for Todd. He's one of the good guys in the game. He's won the Derby. He's won the Belmont multiple times. This is the first time winning the Breeders' Cup Classic, so that's a good one to have in your uh, in your bag. And one eleven buyer for Vino yep. Rosso, I think, clinched the older horse championship. But McKenzie ran really good again. Yeah, again. It just wasn't quite yep. good enough. Dick and, eleven. And Math Wizard fifth. Yes. So they got their money back. Yes. They got 180 thousand. It was like what one one forty or one fifty to, yep. to enter. So they, they they had a good time. All our guys. Uh, Dick Equine Safety has yes. been at the top of uh, many people's lists here Absolutely. as we went into the Breeders' Cup this weekend. Yep. It's a very very complicated. Issue. No question. And uh, Dr. Patty Hogan had a chance to address the issue here, and here's more with Dr. Hogan. 
Unfortunately, I feel the public perception of racing has really been on a negative slide for the last 10 or 15 years. For some, some reasons, rightfully so, but there's so much the public isn't aware of as far as the welfare and care that these animals get and how people feel about them that actually work with them every day. Safety is the utmost priority of the animals racing on the track and the people riding them. But if you went down any backstretch, you would see the daily meticulous care that goes into taking care of a racehorse. The thoroughbred racehorse has got to be one of the most well cared for, well fed, well conditioned athletes in the world today because of the type of care that's given to them on a daily, hourly, minute by minute basis. There are people that care for those horses that not only are they their livelihood, but there's a real bond between the horse and man. I'm an equine veterinarian. That's one, probably one of the most well-known professions. But did you know that there's an equine dentist, an equine massage person, an equine chiropractic person, as well as a farrier, grooms, trainers? There's a multitude of professions that are centered around the racehorse. We do our very, very best to make these horses comfortable, happy, fit, and safe. Safety is our highest priority, both for the horse and rider. And we, of course, thank Dr. Hogan for her time. And Dick, equine safety, everybody's safety is just something that is addressed every second of every day here at the track. Yeah, look, it's been a big deal all year. We all understand yep. why. And I thought, being around Santa Anita last week, I thought they did everything possible. There were more vets than I've ever seen. Right. They went over every horse. Sometimes accidents happened. That's not a good answer, but unfortunately, that's what did happen. Let's get to the turf here. It's a mile and a half on the grass for $4 million. Dick, I have to admit, my favorite horse, he's in here. I yeah. love Brick supporter. How can you not? Dick, he's even money for trainer Chad Brown. When you go through his lines, Dick, he is two troubled trips away from being 12 for 12. Yeah, now, he's an amazing horse, and you remember he was off all of that time. Over a year, Chad, they took their time, and now he's come back, and he's vying for a championship here if he can win this race. and. All year long, Chad was kind of saying, well, you know, we don't really think he wants to go a mile and a right, half. Yeah. And then right toward the end, and the reason he finally decided this, Keith, is very easy. He did not think this was a really strong race for yeah. four million. None of the superstar Euros, no Enable, no Ball Geist, none of those horses magical. They're not in this race. Yeah. So Chad said, you know what, I'm going down the hill, and it'll help. And I think I'm just much the best, and it's all this money. I'm in. Well, and when Chad's in, you must pay attention. <laughs> Seven to two old Persian, the second choice. He does love a mile and a yes, quarter. He does. A mile and a half, excuse me. Let's get the call of the turn. Acclimate, who continues to set the pace. On top, a length and a half to Manwa running in second. United is third on the inside, then Channel Maker. Bricks and mortar in behind horses. Anthony Van Dyke is there to his inside. And these two are about five lengths off the lead, heading to the back stretch. Then it's Arklow. Old Persian is seven lengths behind. Alunak is inside of him. And then it's Mount Everest, followed by Channel Cat. And the trailer is Zulu Alpha. They continue up the back stretch in pursuit of Acclimate, who's been there all the way so far. The lead is three quarters of a length over Bandwa. Then it's Channel Maker on the outside, running in third. United is fourth. Meanwhile, Bricks and Mortar racing in behind horses here. Four lengths off the lead, and to his outside, it's Arklow. Old Persian is threading his way through traffic. Anthony Van Dyke is down on the inside. Around the far turn, Acclimate and Bandwa in their one-two. United is a length and a half behind them. Then Channel Maker and Arklow, Bricks and Mortar, racing in traffic here. And on his inside is Anthony Van Dyke. And they're into the stretch, and it's Bandwa. Bandwa's taking the lead on the outside. United is there. Bricks and Mortar's got a clear path. Alunak is diving through on the inside. And then it's Acclimate. Here comes Bricks and Mortar. And he rushes up on the outside of United, who digs in. These two down to the wire. Bricks and Mortar. Well, Dick, Bricks and Mortar somehow manages mm -hmm. to uh, get out and get clear and yep. run down the, the uh, long shot there and win here at even money. Yep. It gets up by a head. Now, Dick, when I watch the race, mm -hmm. you want a horse to be comfortable, to be relaxed. Yep. Yep. There was not one second in the nah. race where bricks and mortar could be comfortable. He nah, was nah. in traffic. Yeah. He was in tight the whole way around. Yeah, it was and yet when he comes out, he fires and he gets up to win it. Again, my favorite horse. He is just absolutely astounding. There were some strange goings on in there. Channel Maker, the 12, was the one leaning on yeah. uh, yeah. bricks and mortar. And that's Johnny V, yeah. uh, who rides some yeah. It was just, I don't know what all was going on there with the New York jockeys, but you're right. When he finally got out, I mean, he came running, and he had to come running, because my man Dick Mandela with United at longest shot in the race at yeah. 51 to 1. And I tell you, getting to watch Flavian Pratt up close for the last, a couple of days right. out there, 
man, is he some race rider. Yep. He gave this horse every chance at 50 to 1. And Irad Ortiz, uh, and it, they just own a better horse. Right. Bricks and Mortar is better than all of them, but it took every bit of it to get there for Bricks and Mortar. And now he's in contention. It's a two horse race yeah. for Horse of the Year. We're going to see the other one yep. involved in a minute. Dick, let's take a look at the sprint. And before we ever got to the sprint, yep. the sprint took a big hit. Our friend Imperial Hint had to scratch. Yeah, day of the race. Again, the vets were taking no chances for obvious reasons. If they thought they saw anything, there was a little bit of a foot issue that was potentially related to, the, uh, related to that glued, glued on shoe that they yep. had. Um, I think the horse probably could have run and would have been fine. It wasn't kind of. But again, if there was any doubt, they were scratching. I feel terrible for Mr. Mamone and uh, and certainly Louis, Louis Carvajal because yep. you would have liked to have seen Imperial Hint get a chance. My suspicion is if he did, there would have been three horses yep. going for the wire instead of two. Okay, Dick, let's take a look at the field here. Number six, Chancellor gets bet down to three to two as the choice for George Navarro. Dick, after he ran that huge 121, yep. he got beat by a head and he got beat by a head again. Yeah, I was a little surprised he was the favorite over Matoli. Not shocked because right. the jockey change was big to Jose Ortiz and at Santa Anita and they think he's going to get loose in the lead. But man, Matoli is just so good. Dick, he's nine to five here. The second choice for Steve Asmussen. All he has done is won eight out of his last nine. Dick, he's sensational. Yeah, and the only time he got beat this year, he was on a dead rail at Saratoga, and that was the day Imperial Hunt set the track record. Probably nobody was going to beat Imperial Hunt that day, but he would have been a lot closer if he hadn't been on that rail. We know they're going fast. <laughs> Here's the call with the spread. Chance a lot. Alone on the lead here. He's so quick. He's on top of length and a half, but Terrasky is second. Forense Fire is third, and Matoli is going to come three wide outside of Sky as Chancelot motors along here, running the first half mile in 44.04 seconds, and they're into the stretch. It is Chancelot in front, Matoli on the outside, a length and a half behind. Can he run him down in the last furlong? Forense Fire is third, Chancelot at the 16th pole, Matoli runs at him, Chancelot and Matoli, Matoli's a monster! Dick, all the times that I've watched Matoli run, I don't think I'd ever bet on him. I always think I bet yep. against him. Yep. Well, this time I was like, no, I'm betting on Matoli. And Dick, he just runs down chance a lot, yep. just as determined as you could be. Gets up to win it by a length and a quarter, $5.60 to win. And what can you say about just a tremendous sprinter Matoli has become? Yeah, no doubt. In addition, he won the Met Mile. He won at seven furlongs, 112 fire. So here's the decision the voters are going to have to make. Uh, uh, the sprint champion, uh, who's won at a mile, right. won multiple grade ones, undefeated grass horse, multiple grade ones, both Breeders' Cup winners. They really have nothing in common. Uh, in the last poll, it was bricks and mortar in a landslide uh, when people vote. But to me, this is a lot closer than that. Right. I'm going to have to think about this. I am a voter, but this is a really, really, I don't think we've ever been presented with an exact situation right. like this, because normally it's the top three-year-old or it's the horse that wins the classic. You know, Vino Rosso is not going to be a horse of the year, but it's one of these two, and, right. and how do you go? And I don't know that there's a right answer to this one. Good. We still have more to get to. Yes, the we Midnight Bee Suit yes. uh, completed undefeated season. That's coming up on our next block. Stay with us back after this. What does Chapman's seven locations and 10 car brands mean to you? It means a huge selection of quality pre-owned vehicles, all makes and models, many one owner low mileage certified with miles of factory warranty remaining. Safety checked, meticulously detailed, and each come with a free Carfax report so you can buy with complete confidence at any Chapman Auto Store near you or shop online anytime at ChapmanPreOwned.com. If our emblem is not on your car or truck, you probably did pay too much. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings.
Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Time to give out our weekly awards jockey and train of the week, brought to you by Turning for Home. Log on to their website at turningforhome.org. Get involved with that tremendous organization today. Dickie's not a local jockey, but can I name Irad Ortiz Jr. as our jockey of the week? Hey, man, he got the local horse home. Yep. No problem. Again, I felt very badly for Michael Sanchez and his agent, Joe Hampshire, but I think they understood when Irad got named. Yeah. I mean, look, he's the Eclipse Award winner. He's probably going to win it again. And Dick, our trainer of the week. Yes. It's got to be. He is our man. Carlos Guerrero, yep. our congratulations, Carlos. You just enjoy this win for, like, for forever. the rest of time. Yeah, no, forever. Yep. I mean, really happy for his wife, Lisa, and, and the girls. It's just, it's something they've been working Working toward, but you don't get these opportunities yeah. very often. They got it, they took it, they won it, and they'll win some more. We hope to have them on the show here. With Maybe us next, we're hoping to get them on next, next week. week. Yeah. Dick, let's get to race recap. Race recap brought to you by the great folks at Pewter Stable. Log on to their website at pewterstable.com and become an owner today. We're going to start with the disc staff. Dick, uh, midnight bee suit, yep. perfect seven for seven coming in. She's at even money. But Dick, she's not going to get it done. And here's my Rodney Dangerfield horse, yep. Dick. It's Blue Prize again, and she's eight to one. Yeah, Blue Prize got the jump on everybody. Came from way back, but made that giant move to give our man Jersey Joe Bravo. Yep. Believe it or not, his first ever Breeders' Cup really? win. Thrilled for Jersey Joe. But yeah, Midnight Beast just didn't have that same jump she's had all year. But what a season. She came in seven for seven. She'll be seven for eight with a second. Dick, Blue Prize is really yeah, good. She's a neat horse. $19.80 yeah, to win. Let's take a look at the mile, Dick. And there were two uh, fillies that were in contention here. Got Stormy the three to one choice. Yep. But Dick, Uni, Chad Brown, just has one of the most amazing late bursts you're going to see. And Dick, the turf horse was playing to speed all yep. weekend. Yep. She's a stone cold late runner and she right. blows him away. Yeah, I was a little concerned because of that, Keith, and I thought there was the potential when Bolo came out that there wouldn't be a lot of speed. It turned out to be a speed duel, which set it up yeah. perfect. They went fast, but man, Uni has got that's European acceleration. You don't see horses trained in America with that kind of acceleration, but it's Chad Brown, yeah. and that's what he does. Dick, I know. I'm, uh, can I mention Uni along with Goldakova? I know yeah. that. Is, so yeah. let's, let's win a couple yeah, more. Yeah, you first. got it. You uh, got but it. yeah, Goldakova was one three. Yeah. <laughs> I on racing. We yes, had a big sir. weekend last weekend. Yes, we did. Not so much nah, this weekend. There's one graded race in Churchill. Of you got it. The, <laughs> the Grade Three Commonwealth Turf. We're going to wrap it up with news and notes. Be right back after this. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. We continue with our Breeders' Cup coverage, and of course, the final segment brought to you by the Granny Fund. Get involved and get some of those people in the backstretch that continued education. Make your donation now. Bruce Casella, Dick Girardi, Keith Jones, Dick, you talked about uh, the Horse of the Year right. breakdown. How about the three-year-old championship? Yeah, it's really interesting. Obviously, if Code of Honor won the Classic, he had it. Now he doesn't. It's a Code of Honor. It's Maximum Security. Maximum Security is going to run again, maybe a cigar mile. Right. And I think if he wins it, he's probably going to get it. He would get my vote if it was today, right. but it's not today. We'll see how it plays out. How about Spun to Run? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, why not? If he goes and wins the Cigar Mile, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but he would then be in play. Dick, we got to win another year for another Breeders' yes, Cup. Yes, we do, unfortunately. It'll be at Keeneland next year. Don't forget post-time now here at Parks is 1225, and we'll see you next week on Let's Go Racing.